What do you think you're doing? I'm just cleaning my colonies. That's not how you do it. Well, <laughs> it kind of is, but you need to clean the inside of your setups too. How do I do that? Well, my friend, listen up and take some notes because we have another episode of the basics of ankeeping coming your way. Hey guys, I hope you've all been keeping well. Today, we're gonna explore how to thoroughly clean your ant keeping setups. If you didn't manage to catch the last episode where we talked about feeding your colonies, I'll leave a link for it in the description down below. But we're gonna hit it off by talking about test tubes. Considering they are the most used piece of equipment in an ant keeper's arsenal, it'd be good to know how to clean them. You may be presented with the following looking test tubes after an ant colony has lived inside them. Your main struggle here is getting out the old dirty cotton. You can try and get this out in a few ways, but you'll have to be careful not to scratch the walls of the test tube. If you plan on keeping future colonies in them, you don't want visibility to be impaired by any scuffs or scratches. Okay, first method you can try is using a wooden skewer. These are quite good and cheap. You can grab 100 skewers on Amazon for under five pounds, and in all honesty, you can reuse these as much as you like. You basically break off enough length of the wooden skewer to fit down and into the test tube to reach the cotton. Now, when you break the skewer, you want to do this slow enough so that the wood really flakes apart, instead of it cleanly snapping off. Flakier, the better. Once you have your flaky skewer, you want to put this into your test tube. Then you'll want to slowly turn and push the skewer until it catches onto the cotton. You will know when it is gripped tightly, when it becomes harder to turn, or the cotton turns with the skewer. With the turning motion, you then want to slowly start pulling out the cotton. Another method to use, which has become quite popular, is by using something which is corkscrewed in shape to grip the cotton instead. You can attach a screw to a screwdriver with tape or string and use the same turn motion to grip and pull out the cotton. Other methods include using hooked wire, tweezers, or even a dental pick. Once you have removed the cotton, you want to clean the test tube. I'd recommend doing this with a standard dish soap. Once again, it can prove quite a struggle to get in the test tube to clean it. So I highly recommend grabbing yourself either a small toothbrush, bottle brush, or my personal favorite, a pipe brush. Cleaning test tubes two or three times is highly recommended as it is easy to miss harmful microbes or bits of dirt. After draining them of water, you should then leave these out to air dry and somewhere warm. Drying them with a piece of tissue or a towel can just put bacteria back into the test tube, so you don't want to do that. Okay, that is test tube cleaning fully covered. I know it seems like a bit of a chore guys, but this could save you money just by reusing the same ones. Plus, you want to have some clean ones hanging around for when nuptial season arrives. All right, let's move on to actual ant farm cleaning. Now, much like pet fish, snakes, frogs, mice, you name it, you'll have to clean out their tank or setup at some point. And the same applies for ants, only ants are smarter. You see, most species of ants actually take their rubbish, which consists of uneaten foods and dead colony members, to a dump site. As an ant keeper, this makes your job so much easier. You essentially act as their bin collector, going in and picking up their rubbish. Now, not every situation is going to be exactly the same. Some of your ants may dump rubbish in their actual nest, Others may dump it in their foraging area, and some may not even move it at all. All ants have their own tendencies towards rubbish, and it is your job as the ant keeper to understand and learn those tendencies. For ants who dump rubbish inside their nest, it may be the case of you temporarily moving them out and giving their setup a good clean. If you fancy learning how to move a colony from one setup to another, I've left a link for my tutorial in the description down below. So to undergo this task of cleaning your ant farms, you'll need to have a couple of tools. I'd firstly recommend putting on a pair of rubber gloves so you don't get bit.
Then, using a pair of tweezers, try your best to pick out all of the larger items of rubbish that the ants have left around. Then, you can use a test tube, small container, or feeding dish to scoop out any of these smaller items. You may also find that a piece of blue tack or damp cotton on the end of a skewer or tweezers can collect up any tiny pieces that may be lurking in any cracks or crevices. Obviously, you can try and use more technical methods like using a mini USB hoover or aspirator, but that is entirely up to you. All the methods mentioned will work effectively. One thing which a lot of people struggle with is collecting ant rubbish from fine sand or soil uh, because it tends to seep into it. One thing you can try is a mini mesh sifter. This can easily scoop up any dirt and filter out any dead workers or insect carcasses. Another thing some of you guys will also have to clean out is the tubing that connects your setups all together. For some of you, it may not be a massive issue if you have short pieces of tubing, but for people like me who have meters running between setups, you'll have to stay on top of it. You'll want to start by removing the tubing and all the ants that may be inside it. You can do this by firstly unplugging one end and then capping the openings with cotton. Then repeat the same again, but on the other end. Once you have your piece of tubing singled out from the setup, you can then proceed to unplug one side and gently tip your ants into your foraging area. There are a few different ways you can clean long pieces of tubing. The first way is by scrubbing it with a drain cleaning brush and dish soap. These brushes come in different sizes of up to two meters, which is perfect for getting to those difficult parts of the tubing. Another method to cleaning tubing, which I used to do a lot, is scrunching up a piece of tissue, forcing it into one end of the tubing, followed by some soap, and then over a sink, I force water through it with the tap. You can obviously give this a go outside uh, if you have an outdoor tap. Uh, like the test tube, you'll have to use standard dish soap and give the tubing two or three washes. Drying long pieces of tubing can be a bit of an issue as it sometimes leaves water marks. The best thing you can do is leave it drying vertically so the water can either drip out the bottom or evaporate out the top. It may also take some time so if you urgently need your tubing back in your setup, I recommend having an already cleaned one on standby so you can just swap them over. It is easy to throw away old pieces of equipment like this and buy new stuff, but seeing as you can have them cleaned within a short space of time, I don't see why you can't reuse them. You should also clean your tweezers, feeders and other equipment you use often. It may not seem like it, but when you use these things a lot, they do get mucky quite quickly. One thing you may be asking is, when do I replace the substrate in my setups? How long does it last before it is no good? Well, substrate will last forever, so long as you keep it clean. Leaving rubbish to rot over some substrates can promote mold growth. Uh, this will then force you to replace any affected areas. Okay, it's finally time to talk about how often you should clean your setups. Uh, this is actually broken down into two types, maintenance and setup cleaning. Maintenance cleaning consists of picking up ant rubbish like uneaten foods, dead ants, and insect carcasses. This is something you want to keep on top of and it's something that you want to do every two days or just before feeding your ants. Setup cleaning is more thorough and usually consists of uh, cleaning your tubing or even the glass of your setups. Uh, this is something you can do every few months. As far as test tube cleaning goes, try not to leave these too long before cleaning them out as the dirty water can sometimes stain the inside of the test tube. We all know someone who loves to leave these for months on end before finally cleaning them out. But let's not point any fingers. The main point to take away from this is the cleaner the setup your ants have, the better it will be for them, as there will be a much reduced risk of any mold growth, parasite invasions, or even a bad smell. In the end, it will be more appealing for you as well. Uh, looking at a nice clean setup. Obviously, it is hard to relate everything I have mentioned to every single ant setup in the world, so if you are struggling, please drop a comment down below or contact me through my social media. Alright guys, stay safe and I will see you in the next one.